with them. I said, what do you mean babies? He says, well, let me tell you. He said the slave babies, the slaves who had babies, they would steal the babies during the course of the day, sometimes when the mothers weren't washing. I said, what do you mean babies? I said, you mean babies like five or six years old? He says, no. These babies, some would be infants, some would be a year old. He said some would be toddlers. He said they would grab these children and take them down to the, the swamp and leave them in pens like little chicken coops. They would go down there at night. Take these babies and tie them up because they hunted the big bull alligators. These big bull alligators were not raised on farms. They were in the wild. These alligators would weigh six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Those are the ones they wanted. They would skin them, make the wallets, get the meat, do different things with them. He said, but what they were doing was tie them up, put a rope around their neck and around their torso, around here, and tie it tight. He said, the baby, I said, well, what would the babies be doing? He said, well, my grandfather said they'd be screaming. He said, what would you do? He said, say, just let them scream. He said, what they would do, he would help them to chum the water. He said, when they would throw the babies in tied to this rope, he said, in a matter of minutes, he said, the alligators were on them. He said, the alligators would clamp his jaws on that child. Swat, as a matter of fact, once he clamped on them, he was really swallowed. He was You couldn't see anything but the rope. And we would pull the alligator in and tie his nose and hit him in the head with an axe, a pickaxe. He said we would then drag him to the shore. We'd drag him to the shore and leave him late and we would do it again, maybe two or three times a night. He said, I said, so what do you mean? He said, well, yeah, they were taking these babies and killing them for alligator bait. I said, so all these things I've been collecting. All these things I've been collecting are really, really something that I can really talk about and say they're of a truth by what you say. He said, I'm telling you, he said, nobody wants to talk about it. He said, I'm only telling you because you're here. I may never hear from you again. He said, but these things actually depict the acts that they did to slave babies back in the bayou country and down the south they did this they hunted alligators with these babies that's why they call alligator bait the word nigger was created during slavery by oppressors of black people the word was used to demean blacks by inferring that they were lazy good for nothing thieving individuals they actually, even many years later during the Jim Crow era, created items using the N-word. Here you have niggerhead shrimp. Later on, they became a little bit more defined and called a Negro head shrimp. They also have here a can called nigger hair tobacco, which was just chewing tobacco or smoking tobacco. Today, many blacks use nigger as a term of endearment. Disrespect of self invites the same from others, especially when those being disrespected are willing to tolerate it. Know your history, lest we forget. They have to track me down and produce ain't no nigga for him, which was his first hit. Nigga, but nigga in the street, nigga, we ain't gonna focus on how another nigga rolled. Here are some other items from the Jim Crow era. Here are a pair, just, just a box of nails, featuring a black man with his mouth gaped wide open. And these infamous twins, the gold dust twins, they sold detergents sim similar to a very popular detergent we would have today, showing these two little black babies who would come in and just twin babies that would just clean your house, sparkling clean. Here we have gold dust powder. You also have toys that were created for young white children. This is a dancing minstrel. While he's dancing, and it looks like a lot of fun, notice how his face looks. He's made to look like a devil. Children learned early on to loathe and disrespect blacks.
think it's important that we recognize the abolitionists that played such an important role in freeing slaves. Yes, it was white people that put black people into slavery, but it was also white people that got them out of slavery. We did not do it alone, and we could not have done it without the caring and compassionate whites who realized from the very beginning that slavery was wrong. And they realized that Africans were human beings that deserved to be treated as such. And as a consequence, many of them lost their lives, they lost their properties, they lost their fortunes, trying to do things that would free the slaves. One of the things I think is real important to also recognize is that many of the women whose husbands were slave owners talked to their husbands and made them realize that what they were doing was wrong. They would wear them down by telling them that they really wanted to make sure that these people were being taken care of properly, particularly the children. And many of them started selling off their slaves or freeing their slaves. The erosion of the black family is one of the vestiges of slavery that are still with us today. We in the black community need to bring our families back together. We women need to understand that a child deserves to have both a mother and a father. Women, allow and accept your man back into the home. And men, be worthy of being accepted back in the home. So, we've shared a lot of information with you, and you've seen a lot of different things, but they're just a small portion of what we have to offer you. And we're here today as the curators of the Black Holocaust Museum to let you know that we want you to take heart in the things we've shown you, to understand that violence comes from violence. There are people back in the day who gave their lives, risked their lives, white and black, to see to it that you could go to school and do the things that you have to do. You must, in turn, be the best that you can be. The information that we share with you can prevent you from becoming today's slave or today's slave master. I'm Gwen Ragsdale. And I'm Jay Justin Ragsdale. We hope that you come and visit us at Lest We Forget, the Black Holocaust Museum of African American Slavery. And, and we, we thank, thank you. you.